over the years, I've really found there's just a couple of key pointers we all really need to know just so we can have our cells age as well as possible. The first one of those is how to eat. And the two key issues that really matter are quantity and quality. So both of these key issues really determine how our cells age right now and in the future. So regarding quantity, just about everybody has an iPhone today, but just about no one understands they have a Palm computer that can help them determine the amount of quantity they need to eat at each meal. If we just put our hands together, the amount of food that'll fit in both our palms is really a great measure of how much food we should eat for each meal. So those palms are always with you, and so is that Palm computer to help you guide in quantity. As far as quality goes, the Palm computer really should be divided into three equal parts one for carbohydrates, one for proteins, and one for fats. So we all know that proteins are probably the most important thing we should be eating, and that should be the first part of each meal, since that really helps slow down the absorption of carbohydrates, which eventually will become our big enemy in cell aging. So proteins eaten first, we then look at eating our carbohydrates, which are mainly from fruits and vegetables, and finally, we look at fats. And most of the fats we want to try to ingest are the omega-3s and omega-6s and omega-9s. And really cold water fish, green leafy vegetables, and other green dense vegetables are the best source of this. Omega-6s are pretty easy to get. And that's basically our sesame seeds, our sunflower seeds, nuts, and other forms of seeds in general that help give us the omega-6s we need. But frankly, in the United States, we all eat a, a little too much of omega-6s. So really focusing on our omega-3s and even omega-9s like extra virgin olive oil are really the focus on how to fill that third of our palm computer. By eating the right amounts and the right quantities, one of the key things this allows us to do is keep our hormone levels in an optimal point. And what this does is allow us to, to really, really keep our blood sugar levels in optimal value so we don't store that blood sugar as fat and we don't end up with these food cravings and sugar cravings that most of us experience at the end of the day. Second point is exercise. And exercise is one of the key things to keep ourselves healthy as well. There are really three types of exercise which needs to become a habit in your daily routines for optimal cell health. Not only is exercise important, but the timing of exercise and the type of exercise really makes a big difference. So let's talk briefly about each one of them. Timing really matters, and the best time to start exercising is in the morning. If we take a little quick walk, basically what we're doing the first thing in the morning is exercising our cells. And so why is this important? It's because if we take a walk in the morning for 10 to 15 minutes, we actually set up our calorie burn rate higher for the whole day, and no matter what we're eating, we're able to metabolize that quicker. In essence, what we're doing is helping to balance our cell cycle and our body cycle. In the evening, doing a small workout, even for 10 or 15 minutes, some push-ups or very light weight work, again, helps reset our cell cycles and also helps with raising the key hormones that help keep our cells healthy, like growth hormone, which helps us uh, obtain a deeper sleep in general. So the right type of exercise is another key thing most of us really need to focus on. And aerobic exercise is something we all need to do mainly to keep our heart healthy and our vascular system clean and responsive to blood pressure. And the second type of exercise is resistive exercise or weightlifting or yoga in general. These two types of exercise are essential. One to keep our cardiovascular system in optimal shape and the other one to keep our muscle tone and our bone density at optimum. And lastly, flexibility is probably one of the most important things we all need to work on as we get older. This helps with balance, it helps with our motion and movement throughout the day, and without a question, as we grow older, it will help us avoid injuries. Duration of exercise is a whole new thing once you're over 40. And frankly, cycling our exercise has been shown to be one of the most beneficial things for cardiac health, as well as for muscle strength and tone. So working out or being on a treadmill for a minute 
and then resting for two minutes and letting our heart rate come down to almost baseline is really the way to do this, training both the heart's ability to pump more blood and the heart's ability to recover. This is a whole new approach to exercise as we age, but it's shown to be even more beneficial than constantly running on a treadmill. So what else does exercise do for us? It really helps dramatically with our pH. You know, as we age, we all get a little more acidic, okay? And that's mainly due to poor detoxification. And one of the key things exercise does is help move the fluids throughout our body and balance our pH, not only from the increase in blood flow, but from the fact that we're breathing more often and we're blowing off our, the CO2 or carbon dioxide in our blood, which lowers our pH. So exercise is, one of the, is the second key area we all need to work on. The next area of real importance and probably one of the most important in the 21st century is learning how to handle stress. Because in general, our big goal here is to learn to de-stress ourselves for optimal health. The best advice I can give anybody, especially in today's fast-paced world, is to learn to manage your stress. Remember, we might not be in control of the situation, but we are in control in how we react to it. The 21st century is just fraught with what we have recently termed time urgency. That is, we are all concerned with what we just did and what we have to do in the next five or ten minutes or what we did yesterday or what we're going to have to do tomorrow that we have lost the ability to enjoy the moment or be in the moment. And that constant jumping mentally from the past to the future to the past to the future sets up a whole conditioned response, what we call time urgency. And what does this result in inside us is elevated cortisol, which is the age accelerating hormone. Cortisol has many detrimental effects from brain aging to, to loss of muscle mass to loss of bone density to even loss of memory. So the key thing here is to learn how to be in the moment. So I'd like to give you a couple of tips that have worked well with me and hundreds of my patients over the years. The first thing to do to break this constant sense of time urgency or mind chatter is to start to take four or five deep breaths. And as we do that, that suddenly will break that constant flow of thoughts in our mind. So that's a great way to get started. The second thing to do is to really, really try to increase the time between one thought and the next. And frankly, the longer we can make that time, the better we are at what we now call meditation. And there's a little exercise we use to try to get that accomplished, and that's simply listening to ourselves and hearing a thought and really trying to keep our minds clear until we have that second thought. And if we breathe between those two thoughts, over a very short period of time, we'll learn how to increase that distance. Probably as important as anything else is to learn how to interact with other people in order to avoid stress. And the best way to de-stress someone else around you, as well as yourself, is with the simple use of a smile. If you smile to both yourself and to other people, you, you begin a chain reaction in not only how they respond to you, but how they're going to respond to other people. You change their hormones, and literally you can change their, their day. So the secret here is learn to smile to yourself, but most importantly, try to pick three people throughout the day and smile at them and just see what happens. You literally have changed your hormones, their hormones, your stress level, and their stress level. One of the most important pointers I can give you is the power of belief, and it really is your mind that controls your beliefs. Your mind controls your cell health as well. Information is the trigger that can help keep you in the moment. Thoughts are the energy, and we all have an innate ability to reprogram our thoughts, which can improve our cell health dramatically. We are most receptive to new concepts prior to sleep, and we can let the subconscious mind do the work for us. I want to give you a simple phrase that repeated over time can make a big difference in your cell health now and in the future. Information changes my thoughts. Thoughts change my beliefs. Beliefs change my habits. I am a healthier me today and tomorrow. If we can repeat that phrase over a period of time, that actually becomes incorporated into our cells. 
So I want to thank you for taking these important steps so you may enjoy healthier cells and a healthier you.